Hey guys, welcome into the My High Football Podcast, presented by Ideal Home Loans. A lot of a uh, lot of Broncos news. It's been a very quiet off season, which I personally think is a great thing. But some Broncos news: they just finished up an OTA, which for those of you who don't know, uh, and you're always wondering what's an OTA. Uh, Organized team activity is what OTA stands for. And they can go on the field. They can spend some time in the classroom. They can do some of those things. So that's what they've been doing this week. They just finished that up. Now they have a mandatory mini camp June 13th, I believe, through the 15th. So that's the last time that they'll be together before they kind of break for the summer. Coaches get you know, five, six weeks off, and then they'll be right back into training camp. So this is a great and pivotal time for the Denver Broncos. That that mandatory minicamp is going to be big. But the big news coming out of Dove Valley is they, they just signed an edge rusher. And I think when you look at the edge presence of the Denver Broncos, tons more questions than there are answers. And this was, in my mind, a glaring weakness that they just filled that void, that glaring weakness in signing Frank Clark. Frank Clark's been around, I believe, eight years. Um, the last four years, I think, with the Kansas City Chiefs, where he won multiple championships, started his career in Seattle. But he is a viable edge presence, a very versatile player, and a very good player. And so when you start breaking down the Broncos – and their edge presence guys, there were a ton of question marks. One, Randy Gregory. They signed him to a big contract last year, but let's face it, through suspensions and through injuries, the guy has not been able to spend a lot of time on the football field the last couple of years, both when he was with Dallas and, of course, last year with the Broncos. So there's a question mark. Then you've got Baron Browning. Well, Baron Browning showed a lot of promise, a lot of flash, but he has also had injuries. He's also missed time, and he just had a meniscus surgery on his knee, so they say he won't return to full speed until training camp at some point. So there's a big question mark. Jonathan Cooper. Jonathan Cooper's a great story. He had the ablations. He had the heart issues. Um, has played well at times. Um, and I think he's a, a ascending player. So he's an exciting player for me. But again, still a young question mark there. And then Nick Benito, who they drafted in the second round last year. Um, to me... Nick is a guy that needs to continue to develop, um, a guy that I probably have a lot of questions on. Uh, we'll see exactly what kind of player he becomes. So this Frank Clark signing to me, huge, huge move by the Denver Broncos. And think about this. You know, we asked all the question marks about releasing Brandon McManus and what does it mean? And Is it because of his union affiliation, although you can't, you know, quote unquote, cut guys for that. Is it because of that? Is it because, you know, of the money? What Like, what's the story with Brandon McManus? Well, you look at the money they've released, not only with uh, McManus, but they've also released a couple other guys. Um, it matches what they're potentially paying Frank Clark when it comes to base salary and the potential of bonuses. So they're using that money to bolster their team. And at the end of the day, you know, if you ask me, would I rather have Frank Clark and the production I can get from an edge presence defensive end that can really play, or Brandon McManus, 100 out of 100 times I'm taking the edge presence guy. And so, listen, I don't know what's going to happen. They they signed Fry um, as their kicker. I don't think he'll be their kicker. I think they'll go in a different direction once training camp starts, once guys start getting released. But the bottom line is they're using that money to bolster the weaknesses on that roster. And I think Frank Clark is a huge move and a really good signing for the Denver Broncos. Now, there's one more guy out there that's been linked. I believe Adam Schefter linked this particular individual to the Denver Broncos. Um, but that individual, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook is going to be released by the Minnesota Vikings. They've already said so. And he is a guy that is 27 years old. In the last four seasons, he's had four 1,000-yard-plus seasons every every season so he's a legit big time player at only 27 we know they've devalued the running back position in this business so we understand that but here's what intrigues me about dalvin cook dalvin cook can play a role but he is not a role player and that's big time so he can be that third down back but he is not a third down role player so most of the times when i get the "Quote unquote third down back." It's a, you know, a guy of a slighter build, maybe a smaller dude that's really quick that can catch the ball. That you know, but essentially what you're telling the defense is, "Hey man, we're throwing the ball. 
we're not like we're not going to run it. Like you already know, we've eliminated the thought process for you. You don't have to think about defending the run. You can just sell out to defend the pass. Or, hey, man, I can blitz to that side and try to keep that guy in if he's not a great pass protector. Like, there's a lot of different things. Um, it's it's in gambling or in poker, the tell, right? If you've got something on your face that just says, hey, man, this guy's bluffing. I'm all in. I'm going to take his money. Like, that's the problem with being a role player. He can fill a role, but he's not a role player. And what I mean is Dalvin Cook is a legit you know, three down running back or four down running back. He can carry the ball. He's had over a thousand yards the last four years in a row. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can do all those things. So when you get into third down and four, third down and four minus, and he's in the backfield, it's not a hundred percent tell they're throwing the ball. They can still run the ball. And I'll tell you, if you show me a team that has a good third down running package, a good down and third and four minus, meaning third and four or less yards for a first down, and they have a legit run package out of that, I'll show you a team that is going to be pretty good conversion-wise. It's going to also be pretty good um, at winning games. And so... Dalvin would fit that role for the Denver Broncos. So it'll be very interesting to see if the Broncos actually pursue him. Now, there are talks about Denver pursuing him. There are talks about Miami pursuing him. And the one thing I would tell you about Miami and the pursuit by the Dolphins um, would be this, is that language is going to be almost identical. So you go back throughout the history of of kind of the West Coast offense and the derivatives of the West Coast offense. Kevin O'Connell was with Washington back in the day. Um, Mike McDaniels, the head coach. Well, Kevin O'Connell is the head coach, excuse me, of the Minnesota Vikings. He was with Washington back in the day. And then also um, Mike McDaniels was with Washington. Sean McVay was with Washington. Sean McVay went to the Rams, brought Kevin O'Connell with him. Um, Mike McDaniels obviously went to San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan. Now Mike McDaniels, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. So all I'm telling you is that language is going to be plug and play. That language of that offense is going to be pretty much identical. Every concept, every every description of every concept, uh, it's going to be coached. There'll be some nuanced stuff, but it's pretty much going to be the exact same as what Dalvin Cook has been running Um since Gary Kubiak took over there, and 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 he was with uh, you know the Minnesota Vikings, Clint Kubiak, um, those guys on the offensive side of the ball, and then you look at the transition to Kevin O'Connell, the same offense, the same structure, the same language, um, all those things. So it would be probably an easier transition when Dalvin Cook is released if he says, "Hey, two things being equal, here's Denver, here's Miami." Um, if it's all about just going in and playing and, and having the least resistance, Miami would make more sense because the language of the offense should be pretty much identical. So um, we'll keep an eye on exactly what happens with Dalvin Cook. There's other running backs out there in the free agent market. Uh, Fournette's out there. Zeke is out there. There's a bunch of dudes out there on that free agent market. So we'll see exactly uh, if the Broncos, and, and I do think it's an area where they could address, but we'll see exactly what they do in that regard. But the Frank Clark signing to me was huge, um, and, it, and it makes for a much stronger, better, deeper football team on the defensive side of, uh, of the ball. Hey, for everybody involved in the My Life Football Podcast, we thank you so much for listening. Thanks to our presenting sponsor, the great folks over at Ideal Home Loans. Check them out.